Okay, so you said that, uh, um, you said it depends on how you interpret that. That's another thing I'm probably getting annoyed of hearing. Um, whether you read the, the, the King James Version, the, the New International Version, the Standard English Version, the, uh, the American Standard, uh, whatever kind of version that, that, that you read, uh, they're written in, in, in English or what's supposed to be American, but I guess it's actually English, but it may actually be, a, uh, that may actually be another. Anyways, it's a language you grew up eating, reading, so uh, why do you have to interpret it? You know, this is, it, 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 what's it say, you know? Um, and then you said, that as far as there being two gods or two Jesus, I'd have to, I'd have to, uh, you know, give you an example. Um, well, here, this, I'll just do this. Um, well, did, was Jesus, uh, did he come here to um, teach the, the, the greatest thing that people could do, the, the, the best thing that people could do would be to love, um, to love each other, and um, to, be, to be good to each other, and to, um, uh, to, to love your neighbor, and not, you know, not, not to get, you know, be getting involved in war and all that kind of stuff. Or, did he come to teach people to um, not love one another and to divide um, uh, families and, and father against son and mother against daughter and and uh, did, did he did he come to bring peace on earth and goodwill to men or did he come to bring a sword and not peace um, people would like to like you to think that that God doesn't want people actually working together. Matter of fact, now they're starting to tell you to, to not trust peace. To not trust peace, spelled P-E-A-C-E. -E. Um, that um, you'll be deceived by peace. This way you won't trust the thing that God wants most. Is, is peace on earth and love and, and goodness and kindness or peace in heaven? Right? Planet earth. Right? If you can hear... Planet, planet. Hey, we've lived on planet Earth, but we should actually planet heaven. Why? Because that's what it's supposed to be. It's good to have heaven after we die, but you're supposed to have it while you're alive too. You don't have. You're not supposed to have to die to experience heaven. But that is, people say they call um, the deceiver Satan or the devil or something like that. Um, now, that may or may not be the right name for it, but um, I could think of a name that it might be, but I will tell you this, is that um, it is a huge, um, I'm not sure if this is where we're not um, deception either, uh, but um, uh, to, to think that God doesn't want you to, to love peace, and, and um, that... Uh, it's a huge deception to think that you're only supposed to experience heaven after you die. Because living is a gift. So it's a gift. And uh, you should feel like, your children should feel like, everybody should feel like they're born into heaven. Now, um, people also, they took a, a, a story in the Bible about the Tower of Babel and they rewrote it to make you think that God doesn't want people to work together. Because hmm? here, the one time in human history where everybody's working together to get to heaven and um, to make a name for themselves. Maybe the name was, you know, uh, the human family, right? Work, you know, everybody working together, right? And uh, to, to, to get to heaven, or maybe it was actually to make heaven. Right? To make heaven here. And... Uh, instead, what they want you to think is God looked at everybody working together and said, I don't like this idea. I think what I'll do is I'll mix them all up and scatter them around and, and make it where they don't understand each other. Now, we have different cultures, and different cultures are a beautiful thing. It makes it fun. We, we go to other places and we, we enjoy the difference in cultures and stuff like that. But to think that is a result of God hating people working together
is all on how you interpret it, right? Well, maybe everything that you need to know wasn't actually written in a book. It was put right here. That you're supposed to love each other. But actually, this comes from here, doesn't it? Because it's all on how you think about it. It's like those toys, right? Toys people give their kids called army men. And they go, oh, look, I'm giving a toy to my kids. Because that's the way they think about it. But what they don't actually think is what I'm doing is teaching children that uh, they should use their imagination to imagine war and killing one another. This is not somebody of God. Now, um, people have been, uh, you know, people don't like, the, people like to think that the, the Bible is the infallible word of God. People, but, and they say, don't add anything to the Bible, and da, 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 but people have been adding to the Bible, uh, you know, I don't know, a long time. Today they add to the Bible and they just say, oh, we just we write it in italics so that you know that we actually put it in there, da da da. Um, and years from now, uh, somebody will just be writing it and, and they won't bother with putting the italics in. And during the during the um, Council of Nicaea when they were putting it together, who was it? Was it was it the Catholic Church that gave us the Bible? Was it the government the Bible? Or was it a, a, just an organization of religion and and um, government working together and what's, what's, what's one of the greatest enemies of God government and religion that's where you got the Bible now I'm not saying there's not a lot of good things in there because there is a lot of good things in there but just because there's a lot of good things in there if you have if you have a basket with a bunch of apples in it and most of the apples in it are bad but there's some good, really very good apples in there do you eat all the apples no It's very simple. The gospel is very simple. It's not about laws and rules and regulations and statutes and, and all that kind of stuff or, or, or tablets of stone or a heart of stone. Hell is not a place of, of fire and brimstone. Hell is a place that would, um, um, you know, the, the expression that we use is... is um, you know, when we say people are being heartless or uncaring or judgmental or rude or mean, um, a lot of times we use the expression, man, that was cold. Hell is not someplace somewhere other than can be anywhere. Just like this can be heaven or this can be hell. You've had moments where you felt like, ooh, it doesn't get any better than this, right? Feel like heaven. Maybe you're looking at your wife. Maybe it was sitting at the dinner table with your family. Um, maybe it was out with your friends, uh, you know, just... Uh, maybe it was out with your friends having a drink. Um, maybe it was um, looking at a sunset or taking a walk on the beach or going camping with your family. or It could be anything. Is it, maybe you're holding your kids and one of your kids put put her hands on your face like this and said, I love you, Daddy. And you go, wow, this is like, this is heaven. It doesn't, and that's because that is heaven. Those are moments where you're actually experiencing heaven. Because heaven is something, is more than just a, a, a physical location. It's an experience. The interpretation is what you make it. But you don't need to interpret a bunch of other stuff. The only things that you really need to interpret is... Does this feel like love, or does it feel not? I love you very much. That's why I'm here.